Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. I want to thank my sponsors, Top Spinini, Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huggins and Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, ComC.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So here's uh, an episode for your listening enjoyment. We've been talking a lot about the 1972 SDP cards, and we have seen a dramatic yeah. increase in those cards. Now it's hard to find those cards. And hard to buy them because they've gotten so expensive. On Comp C, the expense is in listing. you got to pay 50 cents at least to get the card listed. If they were to run a NASCAR special to say, okay, for the next month, if you send in NASCAR cards, and this is a strategy I'd like to see them do, we want to be the premier place for NASCAR singles. So we're going to have half-price submissions but you've got to put them in numerical order. You've got to make it easy for us that you're not sending us all this obscure stuff that we lose money on. But if you send us some groups of cards that we can post to the site, we'll give you a deal on the submission fees. I'd be all over that, and I'd put in a whole bunch of cards. And then they could be the place. I think there's a lot of people that just collect hockey cards, but there's also a lot of people that just collect NASCAR. I don't know that there's as much cross. It's one of the reasons we did a different magazine for each sport because we didn't, people thought, well, they're just a card collector. They get all the sports. No, people usually focus on one thing. And the NASCAR guys are really loyal. They're really faithful to NASCAR. They probably do collect some other things, but NASCAR, a lot of times, is their main thing. That's definitely like me. That's the exact kind of collector I am. I collect mostly NASCAR, but I do have a Wayne Gretzky rookie card. I've got some other odds and ends yeah. cards here and there, and I still like baseballs, but my main focus is NASCAR. Com C would be a good place because you could fill in your sets. I agree with you, Logan. We've talked. I guess you could collect cars and drivers, but a lot of them collect complete sets because it's more affordable in racing than it is in some of these other sports. And there's not the exaggerated price of the rookie. We are seeing a rise in Dale Earnhardt Sr. cards. His rookie cards command a good price. Since he's not been in any issue since 2015, everybody's hot on him. All his memorabilia cards, autographed cards, even his, like I said, rookies, and even a lot of the numbered singles that he had back from Press Pass. Well, we're seeing a big rise in those. Everybody's mad at Tariq. If there was more out there and it was an ongoing thing, then all the demand is focused on the years that he has cards. And I still think a, a premium should be on cards for when the player or the driver was active and not after they've retired or after they've passed away. Retrospective cards are okay, but I want to see the guy, baseball player, football player, whatever, when they're still playing. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's why his 88, 89 Max cards are so popular. Plus, he's got a, an 83 Uno card that's really tough in a 10 of any grade or any company. When we talk to the guys at Panini, they are trying very hard to get the licensing for Dale Hart Sr. to be allowed to use them on cards. So we'll see. I heard you guys talk about that, that Teresa wants Babe Ruth type money or something like that. I believe Panini has the paperwork with maybe her lawyers, but maybe there's no figure. So I believe that Panini was going to try to show they were very interested in that they would go with the same money they're paying Babe Ruth for his image. I know you collect racing cards. It's not your primary focus, but... Do you remember the first racing card that you ever got in your collection? I think in 88, Max sent me a set or something like that with my name on it. Oh, gosh. That's I mean, so it, cool. it, like a presentation box or something. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so they wanted us to do a price guide for NASCAR. And it took us a while because we weren't going to do it unless we thought we could do it. But yeah, no, I've been finding when I put stuff on Com C, which is really exciting to me is when I sell racing cards, it's not always the best known, most famous drivers. It's driver collectors or somebody's completing a set. It could be a driver that didn't win very many races. They still have a following. And it's not just the family. I don't think it's every driver I think had fans. Otherwise they get bumped. They got to exactly. win or they got to have a great fan base. The fans have some kind of connection to a driver, no matter 
whatever no ma- level, no matter and how then they are diehard. Because I was just thinking of TJ, he's a big read source, and, yeah. and so when the sets come out, they're all looking at the checklist to see if any read sourcings are in there. And so you could enter whatever name, and then they're all fighting for the one on ones, which is pretty interesting. So when I get an order from Comp C and it's five cards, five relatively common cards of the same driver and he's never won a Winston Cup or he's never even won a race maybe but that's somebody that's a true fan and if they make me an offer I'm probably going to accept it because I want to encourage people to really be true collectors it's not a flipper when you're saying that what I usually do is I'll get multiple cards but I'm using them for through the mail autographs okay that's a big thing too to get multiples yeah because I'll usually send a few and then that and in the letter, let them know that they can keep a couple for themselves. Sports lots would be great for that. But yeah, I've diminished that already. I don't think they <laughs> have many NASCAR cards. For You're talking about driver collectors and things like that. This is a real random story, but about, I guess it's been about two weeks ago, I was in Chick-fil-A, of all places, go figure, and I had my Panini racing card shirt on. I walked in there, and this guy just kept staring at me. And he finally asked me, he goes, what do you know about Panini racing cards? I said, I collect cards. I'm an NASCAR fan. He goes, you may know my son. His name is Tommy Joe Martins. And he's an Xfinity driver, drives in in other series. They were in Mississippi, but they were in town in Memphis. And they were at that Chick-fil-A. So now, just because of that little quick interaction, I'm a Tommy Joe Martins fan. He's not one of (laughs) us. You're also a Sam Mayer fan. I am a Sam Mayer fan because he signed something for me during COVID. When they were here in Memphis, and hardly anybody else did. So now I love him just because of that. So it's funny how the interactions that you have with these drivers or their family or whatever yeah. it really spawn the interest in that particular driver. Well, wanna- what was your first race, Dr. Beckett, that you attended? Do you remember that? Charlotte 600, I think. Wow. In when was that? In the mid-90s, I think. I don't remember going before then. And then the TMS was created somewhere around in there. I think it was built in the middle of nowhere in between Dallas and Fort Worth. And so we had season tickets for that, and we went out there for that. But the problem with that was the parking, and it's an all-day thing, which I wasn't prepared for that. But it was like that, too. you got to go in the morning, and you come back at night, and you pay a lot for parking, but it was still happening. We got in the infield and it was on a Sunday, obviously, at least the one in Dallas. I actually did the same thing there. I went to the chapel service. You sit or stand in the back and all the drivers are up there in the first few rows. When they start praying, every head is bowed. (laughs) They're praying for (laughs) safety. Nobody wants to see bad accidents, but they're strictly business. Uh, I'm not a big one for asking for autographs, but they're uh, finely tuned athletes with amazing instincts and reflexes. For racing, was there a lot of discussion on that first issue? For that, co- uh, no discussion about who would be on the cover. I think that was obvious, right? But the picture, one of the things that's cool about NASCAR is that in most of the sports, I mean, you have car cards when you. Tell people you're a card collector. They think, well, are you a car collector? A Dale Earnhardt's car or like that it sells for more than a common card. And there are people that collect all the Dale Earnhardt cards, whether they're of him or his car and stuff like that. So to show his car and a little a photo inset of him made a lot of sense. I'm sure I rubber stamped it, but I think the decision was an excellent decision before it even got to me. And then the other cover I thought was pretty interesting, the one on the right, comparing that rivalry between Jeff Gordon and Darren Hart Sr. with the Speed Racer and... Was it- Racer X. That, do you remember that cover? Or I just think at some point in there, and it may have been around in there, we started doing more anime, Pokemon, Digimon... Dragon Ball Z, stuff like that. So we had a group within our company, including the graphic design people, that were getting really tuned in to all things that were Pokemon, those kind of things. So anything anime or artistic like that. So I think they were having fun with it. But again, I wasn't really involved in that other than it's creative and makes people think. The subscribers like the covers, but if you have a newsstand copy of a magazine, which we did, we're on the newsstand, 
you've got a split second to catch the eye of somebody that's walking by the newsstand. And they can't even see the whole cover. They may just get a glimmer. And if you don't have something that, oh, make them stop, then you don't get that sale. And so our graphic design people were trying to do things that stood out. Now, that actually is a good issue because there's a big article about 1988 Max. And I think there's some uncut sheet photos in there. Maybe think of the issues about adding Beckett sample cards. Oh, that was but, really a tough tip, collectible. Tipping them in. Yeah, that was yeah. only on certain issues. And we had the full cooperation of the card companies that wanted to do it. And you did the little sticky stuff. So, yeah, I think those are tough. We did it on almost all the sports. I don't remember doing it for basketball, but I definitely know we did it for baseball and football a lot. And certain companies really thought that was cool to do that. And they'd say sample on the back. I don't know if people collect them as a complete set or whether they just get their favorite driver. And those are super tough. There's one baseball player that I collect that is a common that in 20 years I've never seen for sale. And I check eBay every day. Who is it? Josh Fogg, baseball. Josh Fogg, okay. From his Beckett checklist, pretty much all I'm missing are these Beckett samples and a couple of one-of-ones, and it's it's driving me nuts. So, yes, they're super tough. Well, yeah. I remember back in the day, I could have gotten a whole lot of them, and I just yep. I thought, well, they'll be around. But not now, I think when people get them, they keep them. They're, they're that tough. My recollection is that they were delivered to us with the sample imprint already there, that we didn't get raw cards and go get them stamped up and then insert them into the magazine. My recollection is that they came to us with the sample stamp. In fact, there were gold and silver on some of those of uh, saying sample in gold or silver uh, imprint. So we got them that way. There's different types. We get these a big box of cards and we just take them to the printer and say, insert these. You put them on this little tear out card or something. So you wouldn't find a bunch of them unless you saw a whole bunch of them in a, and pulled them off. You could unstick them. And I think people did do that, but it'd still be hard to accumulate a whole bunch of them because it, it probably wouldn't be worth buying a bunch of magazines just to get the cards if they were all Earnhardt's or Jeff Gordon's. But I, I think they gave us a random assortment of the cards that like Josh Fogg, I don't think he would be tougher than the other guys necessarily, but not easier either. If he's in the set, he probably had as many as the others, but it's just... You know, probably the kind of, one that was easier to throw away. No, but it, it, and again, that's the kind of stuff I could find in a dollar box. In fact, it wouldn't even be in a dollar yep. box. It'd be in a quarter box. Yep. But you wouldn't notice. Most of them are imprinted on the back. And so if you went through the front of the cards, you wouldn't even see it. Some of them have right. a notation on the front, but I will remember that if I see stuff. Josh Fogg. Okay. Yeah. That's, cool. yeah. That's the kind of stuff I, I put on Com C. If I get one, I'll yep. put it on Com C. And it's amazing. Sometimes the better players are already there at a low price, but the more obscure players are, in effect, Jason, maybe harder because they weren't saved as much. 